This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Eric Morton of WDWNT.com. Here now are the top Disney Park stories from around the world for August 17th, 2022. Monday night's fireworks testing at the Magic Kingdom revealed a preview of new additions to Disney Enchantment in honor of the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. Thanks to Twitter user at wheels underscore 518, we can share photos of archival footage of Walt and Roy Disney projected onto Cinderella Castle. The projections are reportedly part of a new introduction for Disney Enchantment to better honor the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. Nothing has been confirmed by Disney at this time, though the new intro is said to be debuting soon. A common complaint after Enchantment made its debut for the 50th anniversary cited the lack of Walt Disney in his show meant to honor the realization of Disney's Florida project. This hopefully will be great. Ahead of its release today, Shop Disney made a statement about the name of Disney's Electrical Light Parade Magic Band Plus. The artwork features the floats of the Main Street Electrical Parade, which celebrates its 50th anniversary this year, yet it features a different name. When Twitter user Spectro Radio reached out to ask about the name, Shop Disney explained that it refers to the same parade, stating, Thanks for your inquiry, Disney's Electrical Light Parade and Main Street Electrical Parade are the same thing. Curiously, the name has never been formally used in any of its runs in Disney parks around the world. Uh, when it was performed at Disney California Adventure from 2001 to 2010, it went by Disney's Electrical Parade as the park doesn't have a Main Street USA. Makes sense, right? Meanwhile, at Tokyo Disneyland, uh, as the park has World Bazaar in place of Main Street, the parade is called Tokyo Disneyland Electrical Parade Dreamlights. It's unclear why the official name wasn't used on the product, but the phrase electrical light has never been used in any version of the parade. It was in fact released this morning on shopdisney.com under the name Disney's Electrical Light Parade Magic Band Plus. People are really up in arms. People are very passionate about calling things the right names in this fandom, so that makes sense. There were also a number of other bands released this morning, uh, including a new Dark Pink, a Turquoise, Lilac, and gray and bands featuring the orange bird, Mickey Mouse, Disney Parks Food, Minnie Mouse, The Up House, Toy Story, Darth Vader, The Millennium Falcon, Black Panther, Iron Man, Baby Groot, and The Avengers. As summer gives way to fall at the Magic Kingdom, the Dapper Dans are getting in on the changing seasons with new autumnal outfits. We saw the iconic barbershop quartet performing on Main Street USA, sporting the new look. The stripes on their vests are dark red, gold, and green, perfect for the harvest time, I guess. The striping continues diagonally on the hats. These, those feature the same color scheme. Uh, dark red pants then round out the look, which brings them in line with many of the Halloween decorations found around the park. While the outfits have changed for the season, their musical sets, while they currently remain the same, guests can see the new look for themselves when the group performs daily at 9.55 a.m., 10.35 a.m., 11.25 a.m., 1.15 p.m., 2.15 p.m., and 3.40 p.m. News today is brought to you by the Sunshine Flyer, the new 1920s rail-themed transportation from Orlando International Airports to Walt Disney World Resorts. Start your vacation experience as soon as you step off the plane with motor coaches that create the atmosphere of old-fashioned passenger cars. No two vehicle designs are the same, and just in time for summer, kids ride free. If you book your trip now through Labor Day, you can enjoy free tickets for kids and reduced pricing for adults. Those tickets do not need to be used during this time frame. To reserve, visit sunshineflyer.com. If you're a fan of classic Disney rides, you're going to love this attractions dress we found this week at Uptown Jewelers in the Magic Kingdom. The top half of the dress features a black and white horizontal stripe pattern. The dress also features a pink belt and buckle across the midsection. The bottom half of this dress showcases icons from some classic Magic Kingdom attractions. We spy uh, Space Mountain, the smiling clock face from It's a Small World, a pirate flag hinting at Pirates of the Caribbean, fireworks, Jose from Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, Cinderella Castle, and even a teacup from the Mad Tea Party. The dress sells for $128 and is also available on ShopDisney.com. Toy Story Mania is the scene of the latest Walt Disney World fight breaking out between strangers this summer. Uh, Ramon Aponte Jr., a 41-year-old from Clifton, New Jersey, told Disney employees that he had been assaulted and asked them to contact law enforcement on July 8th. 
When the sheriff's deputy arrived, Aponte told his side of the story. Aponte ended up getting arrested for child abuse. And a boy complaining of a concussion was sent to a Central Florida hospital, according to an Orange County Sheriff's arrest report. How it all began, Aponte claimed, was he and his family waited in line for the shooting game ride at Hollywood Studios. Aponte said he saw two males jump the line and then ransack the 3D glasses bin, knocking some of the items to the ground. Aponte said he picked them up and then gave the boys a stern word, telling them to calm down. The two males then swore at him, Aponte said, but Aponte said he ignored them and continued to wait in line with his wife and children. But it didn't end there. According to Aponte's version of events, the two males heckled him from two lanes down, even though Aponte reminded them there were children around. Aponte said he walked up to them and told them to stop, but one of the boys got into his face. Aponte ordered him to back up because Aponte said he has brain cancer, uh, the report said. The report never confirmed whether or not Aponte was sick. Uh, the boys got closer instead, and Aponte pushed the male back. Then the male punched him, Aponte said. Aponte said he got struck on the left side of his face. The sheriff's deputy interviewed the two males, a 17-year-old named Dylan, and another unidentified male whose personal information is redacted from the report, but the boy is under 18. Dylan said he and the other boy were spreading the 3D glasses out so it would be easier for people to pick them up. How kind and thoughtful of them. Uh, they reached the ride's boarding area and told an employee their ride party was for two. <laughs> D uh, Dylan then heard Aponte say, yeah, two a-holes behind them. Uh, the boys started laughing, Dylan said. Aponte lunged at the other boy and choked him. The boy punched Aponte to defend himself, Dylan said. All three of them were ordered out of the ride queue. Once outside the ride, Aponte allegedly ran up to the unidentified boy and shoved him into a pole. The report said the boy fell on the ground, landing on rocks. According to Dylan's interview, the boy attempted to get up but stumbled into a wall after hurting his head on the pole. Law enforcement soon arrived. The boy told the deputy he was in pain and thought he had a concussion. He was taken to Celebration Hospital for treatment. He had cuts on his leg, arm, and knees from falling, a small cut on his right ear, and uh, blood on his shirt, according to the report. Several Disney employees witnessed the verbal confrontation on the ride and saw Aponte as the aggressor pushing the boy in the queue first. Some saw him push the boy into the pole outside. Aponte was put into handcuffs and taken to the Orange County Jail, the arrest report said. According to online records, Aponte has not been charged in Orange County Court as of Monday. The uh, state attorney's office did not have any public documents to release when we asked about the incident. Aponte declined to comment Monday evening when we reached out to him and referred us to his attorney. His attorney did not immediately respond to a message. Both boys and Aponte also now are banned from Walt Disney World Resort property, according to the report. This is, this is again, more craziness, more fights in the parks. It, it seemingly never ends. This is the second one at Toy Story this summer. So maybe something about Toy Story gets people upset. I don't really know. Uh, this, is a, this is sad, though. This, is, this could be very, very serious. Let's see what happens. Guests will be able to dive deeper into two Epcot offerings when the uh, Behind the Seeds and Epcot Sea Adventures tours return on October 2nd. If you like the Living with the Land attraction at Epcot or have an interest in gardening and natural sciences, then you'll love Behind the Seeds. This one-hour walking tour gives you an up-close and personal view of the amazing plants, insects and fish throughout the four state-of-the-art greenhouses. The Seas with Nemo and Friends is home to more than 2,000 sea creatures, representing over 90 aquatic species, including sea turtles, angelfish, dolphins, eagle rays, and sharks. With the return of Epcot Seas Adventures Dive Quest, guests can once again dive right into this 5.7 million gallon saltwater environment and immerse themselves into the sea life surrounding the coral reef. The experience offers scuba certified guests guaranteed calm seas, unlimited visibility, no current, and incredible marine life. If you aren't scuba certified or you prefer to stay on your sea legs, don't worry. There is a tour for you uh, with the return of Epcot Seas Adventures Dolphins in Depth. Guests can meet the bottlenose dolphins at the seas. 
to learn about their complex undersea behavior and talk with the experts who work with them every day. These guest favorite tours again return on October 2nd and are on sale beginning August 22nd on DisneyWorld.com or the My Disney Experience app. Due to the popularity of these tours, advanced bookings are highly recommended. Also, park admission is not included. The Haunted Mansion's at large medium, Madam Leota, calls in the spirits on this new dress now available at Walt Disney World. The black dress from the dress shop features Madam Leota alongside other iconography uh, inspired by the classic attraction. The sheer top layer gives a ghostly look to the opaque slip underneath. Joining Madam Leota in an eerie blue are tombstones, axes, and urns. Green bats offset the look really standing out on the black background. Keep an eye out and you might just see the visage of the Hatbox Ghost. We found this at Marketplace Co-op in Disney Springs and it can be yours for $129. As scheduled, Kona Cafe is currently under refurbishment at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort with construction walls already up around the restaurant. The walls span the length of the restaurant with dark curtains hung overhead. In keeping with the theme of the resort, some of the walls feature an orange Polynesian-inspired triangular pattern. The tiki god Maui, wielding a hard hat and hammer, appears on signage, notifying guests of the work being done. You're welcome. While the restaurant is currently closed, the kitchen remains open and guests can order food to go. Orders can be picked up at the Kona Island Coffee Bar. The signs for the to-go menu feature a QR code that directs guests to the My Disney Experience app where they can use mobile order. Currently, a limited menu is being offered. The restaurant is expected to be closed at least through October 16th and should reopen sometime this fall. While there are innumerable fans of both Tokyo Disney Resort and the popular K-pop girls group, Girls' Generation, these two worlds collided in an unexpected way this week after the director for the group's latest music video was forced to issue an apology for plagiarizing from the popular Disney Resort. The popular group, Girls' Generation, reunited after five years apart to release a new single and album called Forever One, with the music video released online last week. The new song and album commemorates their 15th anniversary as a group, so naturally, they celebrated with a special 15 logo on their video. Video. But eagle-eyed Japanese fans were quick to notice that the logo in Forever One had an uncanny resemblance to that of Tokyo Disney Sea's 15th anniversary, the Year of Wishes. As it was known, it ran from April 2016 to March 2017 and featured this insignia above the Passaggio Miracosta between the Aquasphere Plaza and Mediterranean Harbor, common for anniversaries and special events. The uh, two bear an uncanny resemblance with Girls' Generation replacing Tokyo in the top left corner. Anniversary moved to the former location of Disney Sea above the 15 logo. The general sundial look, and of course, the 15 itself being pretty much exactly the same. The video's director, Shin Hee Won, issued an apology in Korean via his Instagram page following the controversy. Neither the Oriental Land Company nor the Walt Disney Company has issued a statement or threatened legal action so far against Girls Generation or its label. Say what you want about Captain Hook. But the man was well-groomed, his mustache was always on point, and his randomly appearing 5 o'clock shadow was always dealt with quickly and professionally. Aboard the Disney Wish, you can learn his grooming tricks and skincare routine in a salon inspired by his private quarters aboard the Jolly Roger. It's called Hook's Barbery. This interesting barbershop becomes a whiskey bar at 5 p.m. You can read our full review of the experience right here on our site. Bert and Bernie have been hired as directors for a movie inspired by Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, according to Deadline. Amber Templemore, uh, Finn Lason, and Katie Elwood, better known as the directorial duo Bert and Bertie, will be working alongside producers Lucky Chap Entertainment and Scott Free with Kieran and Michelle Mulroney as scriptwriters. The two have worked with Disney in the past on the Disney Plus series Hawkeye, but are also known for HBO Max's Our Flag Means Death. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad will be the latest in a series of attraction-based films, including the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, the recent Jungle Cruise starring Dwayne Johnson, and the upcoming Haunted Mansion movie. Musician Cal David, who voiced Sunny Eclipse for Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe in the Magic Kingdom, has passed away at the age of 79. Tammy Tucky revealed this news on Twitter. No cause of death was given. Uh, David, who typically was a blues guitarist and vocalist, voiced the audio animatronic character when the restaurant opened in 1994. Since then, Sonny has become a fan favorite. 
Cal never got to see the Sunny Eclipse character in person, but when we spoke to him last year, he was so proud of that work and really charmed by how much fans loved the lounge singing alien. Prior to his turn as Sunny Eclipse, David performed the Unhealthy Living Blues as part of Goofy About Health for the Wonders of Life Pavilion in Epcot. Our thoughts are with Cal David's loved ones in this difficult time. For the absolute latest in Disney Parks news, head on over to www.nt.com and follow us on your favorite social media platforms. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, the Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical Disney vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next magical Disney trip. The best part is that their services are free. Visit www.nt.travel for details. If you're enjoying the show, uh, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more content, click the bell for notifications, and hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of News Today with WDW News Today. You can also support the entire team behind this show by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks News, this is Eric Morton saying enjoy the rest of your today. Have a great big, beautiful tomorrow. Welcome to Disney Entertainment News Today from WDW News Today. I'm Rob Whiteside from WDWNT.com, and here now are the top Disney Entertainment stories. For the latest in Disney Entertainment News, watch Disney Entertainment News Today, hosted by Rob Whiteside. From movies and series news to stage shows, books, video games, and more, new episodes drop every Tuesday on unplanned downtime.